Okay, this is part four in my series on classes and objects. And uh, we're working on creating this user class. And so far, it has an initializer, a couple of string representations, uh, an evaluation method here to compare one instance of a user to another. Uh, we can encrypt passwords and we can get the user's age based on their birthday. So in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at situations where you might want to run code after you're passed a property. So a property is generally uh, one of these variables that get passed in when you create an object. Okay, so for the situation where you may want to run code on one of those, we can write methods that behave as if they're properties. So I'm going to show a simple representation of this. All right, where we're going to go ahead and get the username. And once again, I'm using that underscore to signal that this is a private method. All right, so you're not supposed to use it directly. And uh, it's going to do exactly what you might think it should do. It's going to return the uh, username. And, you know, this is aligning it somewhat more with other object-oriented programming language uh, where we have what's called getters and setters. And so I'm going to make another method and we're going to set the username. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to pass in a username to do that. Okay, and so then we're sort of left with, well, how do we call these if we're not supposed to call these directly? And to do that, I'm going to make a new variable, and I'm going to use the built-in property function, which is meant just for this purpose, all right? So it takes uh, at least one argument, but four, up to four arguments, and the first one is the getter. All right, the second one is the setter. All right, and, and for my example, that's all I'm going to use. But the, the two I'm leaving off is there's a deleter, which, you know, has limited use, I guess. You may want to actually clean up and, and get rid of an object at some point in its life cycle. Uh, and then there's a doc string that you can return. Okay, so if we run this, we're going to see that username is going to actually access one of these two methods. Okay, but it's going to set a value on this property up here, username. Okay, so what we have here now is this new variable username, and I'm going to use it to reference the self username up here and set the value, all right, or get the value as needed. Okay, so the only problem I have now is I have this sort of call to this property function, and it's the same name as the actual property that I'm passing in, okay? So what I need to do then is distinguish it. And what I'm gonna do is just sort of make the username, okay, uh, private, okay? And then modify this a little bit down here and make these private, all right? So now, okay, so rather than uh, sort of getting this uh, infinite recursion where I'm kind of referencing this variable name, I'm gonna just store these in a slightly different variable name. And, and and by the way, yeah, this is kind of preferential. Maybe you don't want everybody uh, uh, directly accessing the attributes of your objects, all right? So I wrote a little code down here to test it. So we're gonna go ahead and we have uh, the same code we've been using, and then we're gonna reset the user's uh, name to Jonathan, and then uh, we're gonna print it out. So let's see how this works. And uh, there you have it. Okay, so essentially what I did was use this username reference, all right, to automatically decide which one of these methods to, to run, okay? But it is preferential to actually write this slightly differently, okay? You, you're perfectly okay to write the property using this method, but it may be more readable, all right, and therefore preferable to use a Python decorator to do this. So I'm going to make a couple of changes here. And first thing is I'm going to decorate this method and I'm just going to call it username. The second one is actually going to have to have the same name. So this seems kind of weird, right? I have two methods with the same name. How can Python possibly decide which one of these to 
run. All right, I'm going to decorate this one with the name of the method and indicate that that's the setter. Okay, so this these two decorators and that slight name change is taking the place of that line of code with the property function in it. And this should behave exactly the same way. So let's try it. And uh, there it is. Okay, so that is us treating a method as if it's a property. And why would we want to do this? So I mentioned before that, well, you may have some code that you want to run after somebody passes you the value. So here's an example of what I mean by that. Okay, so if somebody tries to set a username with an empty string, they're going to raise this error, all right, and then otherwise, yeah, we'll allow them to set the username. Okay, so this is a pretty basic example of, oh, we need to run some code before we allow the username to be set. Now, obviously, I can do a bunch of if else in the initializer, okay, but it makes the code somewhat less readable. Okay, so it may be preferable to, in this situation, use properties. All right, and then, yeah, if you may have guessed that we should probably do something similar for all of the attributes, all right, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to use the time in the video to do that, but just recognize that, yes, you may want to set up getters and setters for all of the attributes in your classes. Okay, in the next video, we're going to take a quick look at inheritance and encapsulation.